He's a hustler, unbreakable, a people's person, and a future billionaire. This is the Hustler's Corner with Smoothie Soliope, well known to you and I as DJ Smooth. See you. Welcome to um, the Hustler's Corner. This is my page, DJ Smooth Live. Without wasting any time, today I'm going to be speaking to one of the most prolific lyricists of the African continent has ever seen. He's dope on the mic. He's a really old, generally a good dude. Oh, you're doing your building me, yeah. <laughs> you cool? All right, cool. Um, yeah. All generally, as a globetrotter, travels the world, been traveling the world for many years. I came up with dude in the industry from the TS Records days. He was one of the first, for me, I think he was the first rapper in South Africa to go international. And I'll say so because he was born in Tanzania, uh, sorry, did I say Tanzania or Zambia? Anyway, and he's just traveled the world with 340 mil, with his live band. He's a lyricist, he writes, he's a rapper, he's an entrepreneur. He is a globe trotter. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got Dumi Mulekane. Uh, let me see if he's already on. Oh yeah, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. Peace to on, are you there? Nice, 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 nice. Shout out to the YouTube family. Welcome to the Hustlers Corner. Are you recording already? Okay, let me know if you're ready. Okay. Shout out to YouTube family. Welcome to the Hustlers Corner. I'd like for you guys to smash the like button. Click like, share, subscribe the video, let your friends know about the Hustlers Corner. This is where we put together content to inspire a new young generation of hustlers. Who I was 15 years ago, who I was 10 years ago, who I was 20 years ago. I would love to have um, received this type of content. So the content is about inspiring you guys. It doesn't matter whatever industry you're in. Uh, us as big homies who learn from other older guys, we um, using our own experiences to show you that you can become a person. I can build a side, I can build your own career or um, complain that you have to. I think that you have to support at this point. Today I'm speaking to a close court. The lyricist, one of the best to ever black mics in the African continent. It's, it's arguably top three in the African continent, not in South Africa. Top three best lyricist of all time. He brings the name to the bank and the volume, and then he's rebranded, he's now called Stony T. That's the brother I'm speaking to today. Do that. Peace, what up, brother? I'm good, man. Are you good? I'm well, I'm well, I'm well, I'm well, you know. Uh, well, yeah, well, thanks. So, if I do it, you can do it for man. Huh? Get a thanks for agreeing to um to do this on a Sunday night. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. For you, anything, brother. <laughs> I got you. I really appreciate it, things. I love. For those who don't know, I mean, I obviously would like to get into your story. But I think the main purpose of the podcast is that you're inspired by the guy. You know, and just also have a... A positive word for a lot of people are going through the most through this difficult time. I'd like us to respect, um, let them know things that they don't know about, but also from our story, I'd like for them to take away things that can inspire them to become better people in their own life. Whether they're 12 years old, whether they're 18, whether they're 25, whether they're 30 years old, I'd like them to inspire the people. I'm just getting started. Let's start from the beginning. I know you've told the story a little time. But um, for those who don't know, it's not that many episodes. Who are you born? I was born in the... <laughs> first, thank you for having me, first of all. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate the invitation. Um, I think you're being very unfair here, you know? You're asking me to have answers for incredibly difficult uh, uh, questions. <laughs> but, <laughs> I will say, uh, yes, I was born in Tanzania. My mom and dad were part of the struggle, and as a consequence, they had to, for their own safety, they had to go to um, go out and leave the country, and hence I'm an exile baby. Um, and I grew up kind of, you know, in my mom's suitcase all over the world. You know, and, 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 and I'd like to go to the third. I'd like to ask you a bit about that, because right now, a lot of us have forgotten what Africa used to be like 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I'd like to just paint the picture of how things were at the time when people were dying and it was good and it was good. And the best kid like you who are kept out, let's try to follow the world. As much as for us in a year, that was sound good, but I can imagine how difficult it was for you. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can tell you, I can tell you physically what it was like, and then I can tell you, you know, what it does to one's psyche and one one's uh, psychology. You know, and so physically, I mean, obviously, you um, you know, you come from a country that is pretty much under, um, you know, uh, uh, under oppressive rule, and it, 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 you know, normal life is inconceivable. You know, even though all of us try to make the best of it, that normal life is inconceivable. And, 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 and for some for some very very brave and, and, and you know people who sacrifice their bodies and their relationships with their families, they, they decide to, to to join the struggle and life becomes very dangerous for them so they have to leave the country, you know? So, Sorry, they're saying my line is bad. Sorry to to disturb you. They're saying my sound is bad. I don't know if it's my sound or it's your sound. You're not gonna do it Oh yeah, I think I can hear it. <laughs> And then I should get back on it, and please come back. Because apparently, somebody's line is better. Okay, okay. All right, cool. Welcome back, family. Peace, family. Welcome back, family. This is Rosiso, Johannesburg, South Africa. Mm -hmm. I think all over the world. Everyone is on lockdown. Everyone is at home. Um, we're sending you peace, love, light, wisdom, and many, many blessings. We hope you guys are keeping well and safely quarantined with your family. We care about you guys, especially young guys that are pushing their own hustle, growing their own careers. It doesn't matter whatever career you're in or whatever industry you're in. Or whether you're starting a brand, growing a business, or starting a startup company, or you want information on how you can better yourself. Go click and subscribe to a YouTube page called, sorry, a YouTube channel called The Hustlers Corner SA. The Hustlers Corner Essay. The Hustlers Corner Essay is my podcast where I get to speak to guys that are doing really well for themselves, you know, especially younger guys. I think I've never had anybody over, oh, yeah, I think I've only had Dr. Mamiki, who's over 40 years old. Everybody that I had is young, and a lot of them are millionaires, and a lot of them are doing well. So go check out those interviews on The Hustlers Corner SA. It's on YouTube. That's my channel. And you can also follow the page, um, The Hustlers Corner SA on YouTube. Sorry, on Instagram, The Hustlers Corner SA on uh, Facebook, and The Hustlers Corner SA. I think it's Hustlers C SA on Twitter. Okay, let me look for Dumin, see if he's back. I guarantee you that you'll love the content there. You'll grow as a person. Stories how they struggle to be where they are and how they're killing it and how they've become better people in, in their own lives. Let's just hope right now the sound is better. Um, Dumi's coming back. Dumi, how's, how's that? That's much better, yeah. Okay, dope. Okay. I think that people will let us know as we go. They'll write if it's bad or whatever. I think you, you are telling me that you grew up as a globe trotter who was, you were born in Tanzania, but because of the political situation in South Africa at the time, you had to travel with your parents. Yeah. Yeah, so, so like, like I was saying, you know, um, first, it, it just physically removes you from anything that is, that, 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 that would be perceived as home. So everything that you have, extended family, um, you know, things that are, that are in your immediate environment, they are all called, um, they are not home, you know, so it, it messes with your psyche, you start to feel like, hey, your purpose now in life is to get back home. <laughs> You know, yeah, and so, yeah, and so, yeah. as, and so as a, from a young age already, you start you start being very politi politicized and very socially socially conscious and socially aware, and that's you know that's where my early kind of education and my conscientization happened. You know, yeah. Uh, then then I, then I then I you know uh, I think you know traveling the world with my mom, I discovered this thing, man, this thing called hip hop. And <laughs> Buddha, you know, it, it, it really just, it made someone like, it, it equalized all the playing field. You know, you could be fat, you could be ugly, you could be tall, you could be short, you could be black, you could be white. And as long as you can, you know what I mean? You belong. As long as you can- You got the skill, yeah. As long as you can break dance, as long as you can something, contribution, yana, you know, be somehow. somehow. Yeah. somehow. Yeah. So it made us incredibly industrious. It made us industrious and it made us, it made us confident. Mm. It gave us confidence. Um, you didn't have to fit, you didn't have to fit someone else's value system. We can, we can, we can create our own value system. You know, when we talk about old school, new school, we've got our own schools, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. 
so that you know that 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 kind of became the way the lens that I see the world through. You know, hip hop, and then on this side, politics through my mom. You know, and that and those are the most, I suppose, the most important things in my formative years. You know, um, uh, the, 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 those are what informed who I became. What are some of the What are some of the um, records you remember now that you're listening to at the time? Yo, bro, some of them I'm embarrassed about, uh, but some of them I'm not. <laughs> MC Hammer, so, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, you, when you compare it to that, I, I don't know about this guy. But no, I mean, you know, Trap Conquest, uh, Ice Cube, you know, NWA, uh, yeah, De La Soul, you know? I mean, things like that, you know? Um, the early right days of rap, when Snoop was new, there was uh, NWA. When Snoop Dr. was young, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's new, brother. Imagine. So yeah, yeah. So so you know, those are the things that you know that that, that kind of um, and we still have. You know, I think like everyone, you know, kids today who like who kind of start to learn about music in their in their in their in their teens and into their twenties, they will always hold this era to their heart because it's what it was it's what informed their formative years. So little, yeah. you know, we 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 are like that. We feel like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and and for me, it's exciting because you are not a, Doom is not a typical rapper. When he opens his mouth, I, I think you can tell there's a lot of consciousness in what he spits. And it's not because he's an OG and he's older like me. Now, really, now I think people can hear the consciousness open everything I do. But it wasn't like that for me 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But you, bro, you've always spit consciousness from back in the day. Right. Even, well, when it, even when it wasn't cool to do so, when people were doing club records and commercial records, you stuck to being consciously aware and spitting that knowledge all over the world. Yeah, I mean that's that's that, 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 that's a big lesson that, that you know that, that I've come to learn is that when you you know one you have to be sincere and true to who you are, right? And again, people evolve. People evolve, like like, like you say. You know, some people start off as comedians and yeah. and they grow into being leaders, and it's going to become real, real important to the culture. You know, so you, yeah. you also have to appreciate that people grow into their um, their um, uh, their greatness. But you know, I think it is it's very important wherever you are in life, you must be very sincere and honest to that position. You know. I don't, I'm, I don't rap about the same things I, I, I used to rap about when I came out, you know? I don't rap about, I might, I might talk about Biko today, but I talk about Biko and I contextualize it and also talk about the mansion, you know what I mean? You feel me, bro? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause, cause, to know, relate to the audience, right? Yeah. Absolutely, and also where I'm at, and where I'm at. I want, yeah. I, I want to secure my future, I want, I want my children's future, I want my grandchildren children you know what i mean future to yeah. secure you know but i also but i also know where we come from you know so i want to i want to be able to talk about all those things and those are the that's the evolution from to me to stogie t but honestly it's just because yo man i it, 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 you have to stick to what you know man you know what i mean and now nah, nah, that's what i knew you know while learning new things and what inspired the evolution of to me into stogie yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think I think it was really it was really just wanting to sp speak about more things. You know, I, I felt like who you know people had put me in a box. Like you said, I've always been conscious. I've always been this guy who speaks consciousness. And sometimes your legacy or your thing, and I always say this, can be a prison. You know, instead of it being your 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 brand, it becomes your prison. He he, he can only do that. You know what I mean? Uh, DJ, your DJ, what is he doing as an artist? What is he doing selling this? Why, you know what I mean? People, you, mm -hmm. people don't take you seriously. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so I wanted, I, and and I realized that people would not accept me doing, you know, a song about the club. You know, a song about the club as to me from to me in the volume because they were they, they they were married to this thing that I used to do. So I was like, okay, now I'm gonna give you a fresh start. You can keep your to me records. And, and hold that and put them in a sanctuary nicely and listen to it when you want to. Yeah. But then we're starting afresh now. We're doing some other thing now. If you want to come join me, you can come along. But this is where we are. You know what I mean? But when the, when the true hardcore fans mm -hmm. pissed off with you, though, especially all over the world, because you fans all over the world. Absolutely. I mean, there are, there are territories where, uh, you know, there's no appetite for so you see where I've lost, I've pretty much lost that territory that I built for over 10 years, where people don't want to hear 
So you see stuff. They want to me in the volume, and they want that to me stuff. So there are, there are places that I've lost, but I have to accept that, you know, in order as an artist, I wanted to paint a new a new painting, bro. I I needed, I wanted to, to 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 speak a new language. I wanted to 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 to, to draw a new experience. I wanted to be honest to where I was. So I had to risk it. I had to risk the fact that I was going to lose people by day one. Some of them, you know. But I think those that stuck with me understood that the level of of, of quality and skill that is not is never ever going to be a question. Yeah, I think you know what I mean. That's one of the things I. I admire you for because I listen to your raps now and I'm like the quality is still not watered down. If there's anything, it's like you evolved to become even much better. You know? Respect, respect, respect. And I guess yes. that is so dope because I watch the younger guys that are, are are in the game and that are getting into hip hop, and I love it when there's cats like you who are at the top of the game and just giving advice or just being those guys that younger guys look up to. At least it just shows what he. Not all is lost, you know. At least we've got young people who are still listening to some good subject matter. Because I'm sure you're inspiring another future Tupac somewhere, or you've been inspiring another new face. You never know, you know. No doubt, no doubt. I mean, that's 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 the reason you know we're doing something like Freestyle Friday. You know, where you 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 you're, you're giving a platform to to, to to artists who, in this time particularly, in this lockdown period, where people are like, oh, what are we gonna do? What are we, you know, you you you. I think one of the biggest lessons is just keep busy, man. Just keep busy. You know what I mean? Keep busy. Work at what you love, and you know, try and find a way to to communicate it to people. And you know, with Freestyle Friday, we're literally saying, "Look, you're an MC. You rap, rap. We don't, we don't need, we don't need lights, bro. We don't need, we don't need the the glitz. We don't need. The, we don't need the media. Yeah." We just need the bars, bro. It's like a, you know, it's like a screen and a microphone. Just rap, bro. So, and it's amazing to to see that okay, the young, the OGs, the young artists, the, you know, artists who've been around for a while, who are, who are, who embrace this thing, and even the audience is going, yeah, man, this is what rap is, you know, which is which is really exciting because we have we have we have the trap, we have the piano rap slash, we have all that, and that's beautiful. But it's also important to say. In, in, in times like this, or when there's no lights and, and nothing, you can still move people with just your words, which is what hip hop mm -hmm. is, bro. You know what I mean? Mm. The, the words are the most important thing. That's why, I, I, yeah, I love, I love the words. I, I love, I'm a big. I mean, you know, I mean, I've always been a big fan of your work. Now, you're you traveling the world. The country is changing. There's 94 coming. You're a kid. You're a teenager. We're all young. Yeah. Now, let's get into peace. The country is going through its own evolution at the time as well. How was your life into coming back to, and I'm taking you a, a few years back again, cool, cool. settling back at home? Because when you come back to settle, it's the way to, America, and I'm sure as a kid, you had to put through a lot of that. How, was, how did you adjust and how, how was your childhood like when you came back from exile? It was incredibly difficult, man, because, you know, uh, there was a lot of us. It was not just me alone, so there was a lot of us. And you all, you, you'd hope there was some kind of program that they put us all through where we say, okay, guys, this is what you're going to expect. This is what's going to happen psychologically. These are the issues that will come. Right? We, got not, we got none of that. All we got was, yeah, thrown throw into deep away to Central Western Chavavu. And, not, you know, you're, 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 you're mixing with cats who are calling you quite a quiet and cats who are calling you this. You know what I mean? You're like, hey, dog. So it was, it was tricky, man. It was tricky for, you know. And, and look, I appreciate the experience because it, it, it toughened me up. And, it, and, it, and, and again, obviously, you know, I, I, I had family. So, you know, it's important always. Love is important to, to, to carry you through something as traumatic as that. But... I think it toughens you, man. You understand that, okay, you know what? I must take my place. No matter what happens, I must claim my place in this world. This is the home. Remember that when, when, when you were in Osaka or when you were in Mozambique, this is the home they were talking about. Central West Yeah, man. Four room house. That's, that's the promised land. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you must make do that. You must, you know, you must make a plan. So, you know, thank, thank me for, thankfully, by the grace of God, man, you know, um, my mom, my, my, you know, my mom, made a plan, you know, we moved to Pretoria, I, I got into a nice school, a, a nice school. And, and thus I started my, you know, I think creating, creating my, 
my 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 value system and my beliefs in the world. You know what I mean? Like being able to go when you go when you go to the club in Johannesburg with all the rappers there, you can test yourself and you can you can battle and you can rap and you can you can see someone like Arthur in the in the in the audience. You can see someone like you uh, know Stone. You know what I mean? You see legends like that, and then. During the week, you go back to school in Victoria quietly, and you're reading, and you're, you know what I mean? It was a great balance, you know, great balance to be able to, 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 to find yourself in the world, find your little place in the world. So I appreciate that experience, you know? I think it's a great experience because it shows you the different worlds. Because you can't be one without the other, especially living in South Africa. No, you know, no. you, can't, you, you can't be too, too ghetto. At the same time, you can't just be too savage and without a sober, you know? I think Absolutely. it's always important to have that balance so you're able to maneuver, navigate this space called South Africa. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah man. Absolutely. Now, now, let's talk about your education. And, 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 and I think through your raps, one can tell that you obviously read. You're somebody that reads. I just recently started reading like crazy, maybe over, what, seven years ago? Five, seven years ago? I started going crazy into books. I used to just strictly the music, you know? Gotcha. And even now that I'm a books person, like I read, I read so much. When yeah. somebody listens to you, one can tell that you also read. Education? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I obviously finished school. I, I started studying industrial psychology through uh, UNISA, and I was two years in, and I went on tour with a band called Through Me in the Volume. <laughs> and How did that start? Yeah. How did that start? Because I, I know that there was somebody from Mozambique, there was 340 yeah. mil. Yeah. You are a game of guys from different African parts, right? Right, right. Okay, so I'll answer. I'll answer the education and the theme in the volume in one in one in one. Uh, um, so during while I was studying, when I when I finished school and I was studying, I was obviously part of the the, the Joburg scene, rap, poetry. You know what I mean? Kind of dabbling, and there was this there was this there was this event where they had this band. One, you know. 340 mil and some other guys who used to perform and people would come and do poetry and while I was studying at you at, at UNISA I would come and do this thing and yo we just we did it once we loved it so much we never stopped we just kept meeting every weekend and just kept jamming jamming then we got an opportunity to go to Norway and Oslo um, and we performed you know ne next to the roots cold play all these things you know that that, that, that will ultimately go into my book you know um, but I remember after I performed the show, and in the, uh, we went back to the hotel, and I was still studying for my exam, because when I land back to South Africa, I'm a grad exam. So I'm still studying in the hotel room, and in the lobby is both Chris Martin and other people who are partying after the, after the festival. And I, and I look at these books, and I go, you know what? I'm done. I close the book. <laughs> I closed the book. I closed the book. I closed the book. I call my mom. I say, Mom, I'm probably going to make this decision later. And I'm going to be faced with this decision. And I'm making it now because I, I don't want to waste any more, any more time not doing what I want to do. And I closed the books and I wrapped it up. You know, because imagine, I mean, imagine I finish it. I study and I finish it. And I know where my heart is. My heart is still doing this thing. So then I've, 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 I've done this. Yes, people might say it's something to fall back on, but there's no falling for it. There's no falling for it. You know what I mean? There's no other option. There's no falling, you know? So, absolutely. So, so where I go, man? Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing. The, the, the chapter ends here. The chapter on this ends here. But... What it what it did do for me is and and what my mom challenged me to do. She said, "Okay, I need you though to continue reading. I need you though to continue scholarship. You know what I mean? And that and that means, yo, I I, I do this assignment. Tamo 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 ita koshot kotnya. I do this, do that. So those things were always in the and 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 they 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 helped my music. You know what I mean? They helped my music. They helped them. Yeah. And uh. And, and this is a part that I'd like for you to dwell on a little bit because I'm sure there's a lot of youngsters that are watching now, especially teenagers. What do I do from a youngster? I've got this branding desire that says, I have to be a dancer, I have to be a swimmer, I have to be an athlete, I have to be a rapper, I have to be, I have to be a teacher, I have to be a producer, a singer, a vocalist, I want to get into entertainment, I want to become an actor. But then on the other hand, you've got parents 
that are like, yo, you are going to school. I don't know how like a music or how to sing it. I'm going to. When now I school, the young people are watching right now. Without having to be too biased because you're an artist, the fair advice you can give as a big homie as possible to youngsters that are watching right now. How would you advise them if they are caught between the two, the passion and pleasing the parent with education? Although you and I both know that education has got a better future, even if you don't do well in the future, you have it for the rest of your life. You can always pick yourself up. I mean, what advice would you give to the younger kids out there? Yo, that this is probably. I think this is the beginning of of this of this live now. Now we've started. Now we've started. We have question. Now we've started. So, <laughs> so I think, brother, that is probably the the, the most important question you, you you're going to ask me today. Um, as as someone who comes from a a family um that was marred by poverty, and and that has. Certain certain parts of my family that are still living under dire poverty. I wish that I wish sometimes I wish I wake up and wish that I had, I, I had maybe made a different choice and given them a better example because the only way I see out of poverty is education. I wish I wish I was you know I wish they told me they saw me on TV and I was the guy who finished school. And was doing something that was, you know, because the, honestly, the, the the thing that I know of that's a surefire bet to get yourself out of the cycle of poverty is education, you know. So I wish I I I done that example and I and I and I made that example, made that sacrifice because it would have been a sacrifice because of what I want to do, you know what I mean? I want to be yeah. ambitious. Um, but I would say this every day in my DMs. I'm I'm hit up by the same young people who are who, who, who are saying, "Yo, team, I'm a dancer, I'm a rapper, I'm a this. I I want to do this, and I want to do this only, you know." And and I'm 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 so frightened, I'm so scared to want chase someone away from their dream because that would have been me, right? And second, to lead them on this incredibly incredibly painful and hard journey. Of art, art, particularly in South Africa, is a very, very difficult choice to make. It's a very, very difficult decision to make. You know, so the best, the the, the middle ground, the thing that I I feel is the best approach for me is to say, understand what you're getting yourself into. People, young people, think that being a musician or being an artist is living a life of no responsibility. It's like, okay, now I'm an artist, I don't have to be as responsible as my sister who's a clerk or who, who's a teller or who's a manager. You know what I mean? They think, oh, okay, I can just smoke my weed, write my rap, and I'm, and I'm done. Actually, no, it's even harder for you because as an artist, you're an entrepreneur. You have to create a schedule. You have to, you have to balance your books. You have to, you know, like I have, I have, a, young, I have a young cousin Who's like 21? As soon as he got a job, they, they told him this is your uh, uh, your tax. This is your this is what you're paying. This is what you're giving his salary. All that is done for him, and it's, it's going to be like that for him for the rest of for the rest of his life. Versus versus imagine a 21 year old rapper, you know, vis a vis a Nasty C or whatever. Nasty C literally has to rely on someone in his team who can say, okay, Nasty, we're going to do your books. We're going to, you know what I mean? It, it, it's not always on to us to go, yo, this is your... But if you don't have that team, if you are a MC screw driver from Kaka Home, you know what I mean? And you're like, and you're going to join. What the, what, you know, you don't, you don't know that you must, you must sign the Sambro, you must, you must have the public, you must get your taxes in order, you must... So those things, for me, I feel like, as soon as I, 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 I notice that an artist is not interested in those things, I make them very aware that look, this is your life from now on. You think Ooh. it's going to be about dancing? No, it's going to be about balancing these things. It's going to be about balance because already your mom and dad don't believe they don't believe that this is more lucrative than just a job. You know what I mean? So you need to prove to them. That's why I'm saying for me it was a little bit easier because as soon as I made that announcement to my mom, I mean, who? I mean, I mean, I'm in Europe. I mean, I mean, also performing next to Coldplay. So my mom's going, okay, all right, okay. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. It's, it's, it's different. It's a very different thing. Maybe, because now, I think you are not, I think you are not as a parent when your child is like, yo, I'm performing next to Drake or Pippin. You know what I mean? You're going to be like, okay, looks like this thing, young one, I can carry a spider, you know? Come on. I mean, when, 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 you know, you know, again, maybe to use uh, uh, maybe Casper's example, when he drops out of school, but then he fills the stadium. You know, the parents go, yeah, no, okay. They're proud, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're onto something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We don't have that. Especially if you're going to my you. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, you know, I mean, I mean, I think the most important thing for, for, for young artists, for people with a dream and a dream of, 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 of you know, because a lot of us are leading a road that hasn't really been traveled, you know, especially if you think of, like, I mean, dance as food. You and I don't know, don't know a a successful hip-hop dancer in South Africa. And when I say successful, I mean successful, like the way where you go, Kiso means why hip-hop dance. We don't know that guy. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so these young people might be the new, they might be the, the mm -hmm. next one. You know what I mean? So you're, mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're treading uncharted terrain. So because you're, you, you're, you're the pioneer, you're the pioneer of that thing, of that thing, you know what I mean? So, yeah. you, need, so you need to be responsible to that thing and and make sure you you have you balance every aspect of it. And I I've always said to people, the rappers who are doing better than all the other rappers are not always the most talented, but they're the most organized. They're the ones Thank who. You. you feel me? Excuse me. Let me come in there, Tunza. Go ahead. I totally agree with you, bro. I always say to people. And I always name their, 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 their favorite or best rappers or artists or musicians who are uh, looked at as the most successful. And I always say to people, I don't think it's about artists alone. It's the team behind them. The team is everything. Gotcha. Am I wrong? Your management, right? You're not. You're not. You're not wrong. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's everything. And, and that's the beauty of where these kids are now. You see, you want some, some of the kids, that unknown kids that you watch today, you see their videos look better than than, than, than than like professional artists, you know what I mean? Because they have a team, they have photographers, they have videographers, they have, so they get that aesthetic, that they understand. But what they don't understand is that second layer, that layer that says, okay, now I have someone who can talk to Standard Bank. Now I have someone who can talk to Sony Music. Now I have someone who can talk to the publishers. Now I have someone who can, you know what I mean? You have to, have, you have to balance that team must be a creative team, yes, amazing, nice. We love your art, we love the, your, your gear, your drip, your, your, your look, you look the part, you sound dope, you've got an engineer who's dope, but, but, do you have someone who can go and negotiate something for you with uh, NetBank or FMD? You know what I mean? And, 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 and I totally that's agree. Yeah. I totally agree. And, and with that being said, I'd like for you to give youngsters maybe five points, and, and I'm not putting you in a corner, you didn't think of it, but because it's a life you've lived, it's easier to, ask this, to answer this question because yeah. I, I get asked similar questions as well. I've got a good manager, good management. I've got a good accountant. I've got a good lawyer. I've got the skill. Uh, I should, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm talented. I know that I'm talented. What more do I need to go and perfect as an artist if I feel I've got the skill, I've got the look, I've got good management? What advice do you say right now, five things that you'd say a youngster should go and focus on bettering for them to become a better artist? Well, first I'd say if you have all those things, you have a fucking lot. Absolutely. And that's a lot to have. That you, you're already like... You're already 10 steps ahead of a lot of people. If you have a lawyer, if you have a manager, if you have a publicist, if you have a publisher, if you have a, yo, you have a lot already, you know? Um, a lot of us, some of us just move with, move with homeboy management. We call it homeboy management. You know, the guy, the guy, the, guy, the friend of yours that maybe has a call center job who's more organized than you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's what we call it. <laughs> So, yeah. so, you know, um, you, 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 I, I think you have a lot, uh, but, but my biggest advice would be, look, it's like doctors. Doctors do not stop learning. Lawyers do not stop reading. They, that's why when you walk into a doctor's office, there's books all over the place. That's why when you walk into a lawyer's office, there's books all over the place because they don't stop learning. It is a, it is a gift that keeps on giving. So as an artist, or as a, I mean, we've been watching battles of Teddy Riley, Baby Bates, all these people, all the, 
you, you look at that work across the spec, yo, this is because these guys continue to work and perfect their craft. And so first you must you must continue to always ask yourself, ask yourself as a rapper or let's say let's say we're talking about musicians, we're talking about an entrepreneur, ask yourself how many times because I know you're busy. I know you're busy. You you got gigs. You're doing crazy things. You 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 know you're on the ground. I get you. But how much time do you spend just working on the the one thing, the thing that makes you who you are, the the skill? How much time do you spend working on that? How much time do you spend perfecting that? How much time do you spend like Ronaldo does, kicking free kicks after after practice is over? You know what I mean? That is very, very important. Whether you're a dancer, whether you're an entrepreneur, and with an entrepreneur, it's about planning, it's about looking, you know, looking at the market, about reading up, and you know what I mean? So always, 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 my, my team, ooh, my team is very small. My team is, 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 is guys going, yo, T, have you watched this? Read this. Yo, T, you should check that guy's freestyle. Yo, T, go go listen to that. Yo, T, you feel me? And then I have a, I have a lawyer in the house. Right here in the house, I have a lawyer who went and, you know what I mean? And I have to fight with the <laughs> But that part, that part, I will never negate because without that part, Buddha, I can't open any door. I can't open any doors if I'm not dope. If I'm dope, I, I, they open. Sometimes you don't know how, I just open, T. You know what I mean? So always... Yeah. Start with the thing that makes that that that, that 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 makes the most sense. But you know, I think before to me continues, yeah. let me jump in there, guys. Some of you guys were watching yesterday's um live hustlers conversations with um the founder of Batu Shoes or Sneaker, the fastest growing sneaker brand in South Africa right now, Theo Baloni. I asked him a question and I said, What advice would you give young entrepreneurs out there? On um, what should they work on? Or if or I, I said I, I specifically said if you were to make a hundred thousand reds as a youngster out there, you're probably twenty one or you're twenty five, you don't know where to invest that hundred thousand, but you know that you want to invest it, you don't want to go buy a car, but you want to flip this hundred thousand. What advice would you give them? You know what Theo said? What's exactly what you're saying? Theo said, Go back and invest in the thing that brought you that money in the first place. Thanks. Thanks, bro. Absolutely thanks. I mean, you know, I, I know I know I know friends of mine in other industries who they, they they say they say a lot about hey man I gotta buy the Audi so that you know when I roll up to the to the to the meeting they must know you know when I ask for this much and I'm like bro I hear that and there is some merit to that there really is some merit but I'm telling you if you make two shows that are successful it won't matter what you drive bro if you shoot two movies that are successful who cares what you want to do I don't you and I worry about what Martin Lawrence drives or Jay Z or any of those guys. It's about their work, right? Abs- absolutely, bro. Absolutely, and their and their portfolio of companies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, look, I, I think I think I've, 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 I'll, I'll share some of the things I think that that in the lock in, 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 during the lockdown that that have really kept me kept me sane. You know, um, that, that have really helped. To, to just you know maintain some some first I wash every day I put on fresh clothes every day. Dog. That's important. <laughs> That's important. Because, because because you know like you 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 have to you it gives you optimism man it gives you optimism like okay all right yeah new day new clothes let's go you know what I mean just just open yeah. your hand up like that. And then have purpose, man. I think purpose is important. Like whether it's a big idea or whether it's a small thing, purpose is important. Just to say, okay, yo, you know, uh, I'm, I'm I'm part of I'm part of I'm part, me and my team. We're, we're on the phone. We're doing this. We're just trying to get to. If we have a thousand followers, we're trying to get to two thousand followers. That's the that's the that's the aim for this week. That the, if it's just that, that's important. You know what I mean? And plan for the future now like plan for the future guys did you hear that plan for the future break it down bro and especially in this time like 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 because it's so scary it's such a scary time it's such a scary time you have to try and look beyond this moment this is big bro this is we've never experienced anything like this but you have to try and imagine okay either january or december what am i what am i going to be doing what will i what do i want to achieve from now 
future then. You know what I mean? Plan for the future. Mm. Pretend there's 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 there's, there's, there's light after Corona. You know what I mean? That will mm. that will keep you sane, bro. Relationships, talking. You know what I mean? Like maintain relationships, build your relationships, get better at your relationships. I don't. I can tell you now. I don't have one single beef in your car. There's not one person. I have everyone. I I after 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 pro kid died. May he still rest in peace. I shook everybody's hand who I might have had a problem with. I said, bro, I I I I just want to apologize. I just want to apologize to you. And I don't, I don't even remember what our problem was, but I just apologize. <laughs> well, it must be that it's not you know. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. So, look, it's one thing. So it's one thing if someone, you know, disrespects you or whatever. Then you know, you say, okay, bro, what's the problem? What's going on? No, I hate you. Okay, I, I can't fix that. You hate me. I, it's Uncle Gene. So you know, then I move on. Then I avoid that person. I move on. But as far as me hate, hating someone or me having a problem where if I see someone, it's gonna be a I don't have any of that because I really want, I, I, you know, I, I I want to walk freely. I'm a father, bro. I'm a father. I have kids. I don't I don't want my kids caught up in weird, stupid things. You know what I mean? Um, and 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 I want to focus on on light. You know what I mean? So that's important. Mend your relationship. It's hard. It's easier to go and try fix the world than to fix your relationship with your sister. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I, I read that in a book. I read that in a book by John. Say that again. It's, 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 it's easier to go and fix the world, to, to, to go and fix the world than it is to fix your relationship with your sister. You know, like, and what I mean by fix the world is, you know, cats, cats will be part of charities, people will be part of uh, 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 outreach programs, but yo, bro, just reach out to your sister, bro. Fix your relationship with your brother. Fix your relationship with your mom, with your dad. You know what I mean? Like, start, start there. Start there. I support that. What you're saying, bro? Yeah, start there. Bro. Just start there, you know. Uh, yeah, so you know, I think I think for me those 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 things are are, are 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 fundamental, you know. And scheduling, you know, just schedule. Like I have a schedule, bro. I have more of a schedule now during the lockdown than I did without the lockdown. Bro. <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I don't think a lot of entertainers in South Africa believe in themselves. I mean, we all believe in ourselves, but I don't think we believe in ourselves enough to really believe we can be like Coffee, we can be like Trevor, we can be like Charlize Theron. You did that at a younger age where you traveled the world, you experienced a lot of things. And I, I always say to people, the best form of education you can ever give yourself is a gift of traveling. If you can afford to, because it's not expensive to travel, just travel. It doesn't even have to be overseas, just on this continent. Now, you did that at an early age, like yeah. believing that you can actually go do well all over the world. You know, yeah. Yeah. and right now, I believe it's more easier. Well, not easy, it can never be easy, but I, I think it's easier than it was. It's more accessible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because of technology, Konaman. Yeah. What advice do you give to youngsters that want to go to the international route? You did it as a young. You did it as a young guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I think, I think our, our our horizons were lifted very early for us. Like I said, we were performing at baseline with. Every other artist that was performing at Baseline in Melville, not even the one in in Newtown, the smaller one. You know, you're two hundred. Yeah. So, uh, you remember that two hundred? The smaller one in Melville. I went to that friend. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 I think it's you know after performing, shout out to Opi Kopi. After performing Opi Kopi, we got this exchange program with a festival in Europe, and. When you, when you, when you, when you're like, when you, you haven't even done 10 performances yet and you're already in Europe performing, your world has been open so much. So you can't tell me nothing after that. You can't tell me now. After that, when I, when I come back from a flight from Europe and you tell me, ah, T, you know, you must buy, I'm like, hey, dog, listen, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> me, I want the world. I want to go perform Madison Square Garden. You know what I mean? Your world is, is like, you know, and and again, there were not many examples for us, you know. Uh, I mean, Prophets of the City did that a little bit, you know, with, you know, touring in, in Europe, but there were very few examples. But today, kids wake up and nasty see signed to Dev Jam. Kids wake up and they see they see our artists traveling all over the world. They see coffee, you know, on 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 on, on prime time television. They see Trevor who was performing at the Blue Room, you know, you know what I mean, in Fenton six years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's hosting the Daily Show. You know what I mean? So 
there are those examples are there. So he, he was on real corpus. I just that's now. what I'm saying. I'm just now, bro. <laughs> so all those there's there's absolutely no excuse not to dream. There's no excuse not to dream, and that's why I it's such a fine line because. I, I love that these kids are dreaming crazy dreams, right? I mean, the first time I met Casper, he was telling me about Madison Square Garden. And I was looking at this guy with the ponytail going, You know what I mean? You know what I Look at what he's done. Absolutely. The first time I met Keenan, he was like, yo, nigga, I'm putting him on. Imagine, I'm putting Keenan on my stage. I'm saying, yo, you must open. He's going, yo, I'm going to kill your show. I'm like, this motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind, that kind of energy, you know? And I fuck with that energy. But, so, I, so I look at that, but you look at that, and it's, it's amazing. The cats must dream, must dream big, must dream loud. But they must also match that dream with the work ethic. Match that dream with the discipline, match that dream with the dedication to 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 the thing that leads to to those things. You know what I mean? I mean, the well, first time you watch Trevor, you realize this is the most polished guy, which probably means he works the most on his act. He works the hardest on his act. This guy works on his act hard, hard, hard. It's so polished. It's so clean. You know what I mean? And I didn't get like this. I'm, I'm, I am talented, but I didn't get like this just from talent, bro. It's experience. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of time spent, and you know it'll be very unfair to expect some kid who just who just started rapping two years ago to you know to have the kind of polish that a Questa or a T or or or, or, or KO has. You know what I mean? You really you really have, so you must work on that. You know what I mean? Talent, talent is God given, but effort effort is earned, Baba. You must earn that thing. You must you must work that. While we are still on the young people. I would like for us to talk about behavior because sometimes I see so many talented people that could have gone further with their careers, but attitude, discipline, um, losing the focus or alcohol or drugs or girls or just behavior, bro. Let's talk about that. Um, I, I, look, I, I, don't, I don't know what to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hip hop. I'm going to keep it hip hop. I'm going to keep it hip hop, you know, um, but obviously, I have I have I have children, and you know I I have never ever pretended to be a, a role model or anything like that. Um, but I try to be responsible about how I move in the world, and I know that it's very counterintuitive. If I'm if I'm trying to get deals with brand, and I'm be, and I'm seen drunk or I'm seen you know in a negative light by 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 fans and society. Society is who informs the brand. You know what I mean? The brand goes, okay, this guy's not likable. People don't like this guy. This guy's an asshole. This guy's a drunk. This guy's a drug addict. So we're not gonna we're not gonna give money to this guy. We're not gonna do this thing to deal with this guy. So it's counterintuitive. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense for you to be moving out there all sloppy. You know? Sorry, Jimmy. There's something you did now. There's something bad again. I don't know what it is. Oh no. Okay. Okay. So I need to put these. I think you removed your headphones or something. I don't know. I think it was headphones or something, man. I'm good now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, some of our, some of our, some of our heroes, you know, like 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 someone like Jay Z, right? Who, what, what, what you learn, what you learn from him is there there are certain there are certain values that that he had from being from doing something negative like selling drugs, right? But there are values that you learn. Th things like discipline, things like be not being sloppy, things like being uh, trustworthy, being reliable. Because if you sell, if you sell, if, if someone gives you a package and says, yo, I want this much by end of the week, you must be reliable. You must sell that package or you must be, that makes you reliable. No matter, yes, you're doing something negative. But the value is, the, that value can be, can be moved from drugs into into entrepreneurship, into business, into into raising children, into you know those values are important. Yes, the act is negative, but the values are important. And so you, we learn we learn these values from 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 our heroes, from people like that, from you know. And those are the values that you you want to kind of instill in young people to say, look, man, I hear you, bro. Sit at home, chill. Smoke, smoke your joint, have your wine, have your champagne, chill out, relax, nothing wrong with that. Be in a club, perform first, and then 
get nice with your with your with your with your crew and then leave. You know what I mean? Don't be sloppy, bro. Don't 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 mess up the bag, bro. Don't mess up the bag, bro. You know and because I mean? you are the main person, you're messing it up for everybody else, right? The whole ecosystem, bro. You're messing up the whole ecosystem. You know what I mean? Now the now the, now the imagine imagine the, the the agent now is sitting at home. She didn't even go out with you, but the agent now is, must must handle this thing now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, I, and, I, and and I can relate to that because I was one of the uh, I'm one of the guilty ones when I was a. Uh, full-time major artists at the top of my game I've made those mistakes as well and I always say to people most of those mistakes that I made mean I, um, when I was full on in my 20s killing the game in the music industry killing TV and radio most of my flop bomb happened because of alcohol and I started drinking late I started drinking at age 27 right wow. and I was never really a an irresponsible drinker but still too I'm a flop one until today when I look back it's because yeah. of alcohol so I mean I can relate to some of the things you say and I know there's nothing wrong with celebrating smoking drinking etc yes there's everything wrong with doing drugs but there's yeah. nothing wrong with, if it's your decision you want to do drugs that's that's your story but us as people that have experienced uh, that, that have experienced the industry we'd like to advise you and say we never touched drugs Yes, we did. We, we did um, drink alcohol. We did. We did um, the wrong things when we were younger, but we grew out of it because we saw that it was messing the bag. At the end of the day, right? The bag, bro. It doesn't make sense, man. We you leave you leave you leave the club, and then the the the, the guy who's selling drugs must get your money. The the club must get your money. Ah, man, man. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Before it gets out of me, man. No, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, now we we we. You know do that. Yeah. I once interviewed Kabel on YSM, and one of the things he told me he says, "Smooth, when I stopped um, doing drugs, I don't think I would have been alive another six months." That's what Kabel said. He said, "I don't think I would have been alive another six months. I was I was owing people that used to supply me with drugs. I was paying money. I was owing them money. I was owing people money." I was owing the bank money because every time when you go shows, you get these big monies as an artist, especially at the top of your game, you're going to hit records. You think it's going to keep coming every week, right? Yeah. And then you end up loaning the money, but then because you're into drugs, you just become this arrogant person. You are rude to people. You are owing people money. You are out of order. And I really do think um, what Kevin was said in that interview, I learned so much from it because I was like, wow. And I look at two beautiful kids because I've got an amazing wife he's married he's doing really well I don't think he would be that cabin if he never changed his behavior that's why I wanted us to talk about behavior as far as young guys are concerned nah shout out to Bugalove man and you know and obviously you know you can't you can't downplay his, his you know him embracing God and him embracing you know what I mean the faith that's really important that's powerful bro you know um, I'm, I'm, I'm going through my own journey as well in my family, you know, uh, uh, through that. And um, it's personal for now. You know, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to, you know, make too much noise about it. But that you, you can't downplay that, man. I think it, it you know, it senses you, and, and, and it's important for people to find something that's productive, not destructive. You know, every like we, we I can excuse a young, a young artist for wearing. 80,000 rand on their neck. It's whatever, bro. You know, do your thing. You're young. You know, it's love. <laughs> sure. Hey, Doomza. It's breaking. I think it's uh, it's breaking. Guys, for those who just tuned in, I'm speaking to um, globally respected rapper, South African legend. He's a hustler. Unbreakable. A people's person. A future billionaire. This is The Hustler's Corner with Smoothie Soliope. Well known to you and I as DJ Smooth.